The U.S. Air Force is reportedly preparing to put its nuclear bombers back on 24-hour ready alert amid rising tensions on the Korean Peninsula. Now, according to the U.S. media, if approved, the fleet of nuclear-armed B-52 bombers will return to an already uh, to a ready-to-fly posture at a base in the state of Louisiana. Now, Army officials have been quoted as saying that the warplanes have not been on such status since the end of the Cold War in 1991. The move comes as tensions continue to simmer between the U.S. and North Korea, with President Donald Trump saying all options are on the table when it comes to Pyongyang. Over the past months, North Korea has conducted several nuclear and ballistic missile tests in response to what it calls U.S. threats against the country. Joining us via Skype from Sydney is Glenn Dyson. He's a university lecturer and a political commentator. Many thanks for joining us here on Press TV, Mr. Dyson. Now, I'd like to get your first reaction to this news and, of course, what kind of implications does this hold? Well, um, I would stress that this uh, initial report uh, suggests it's being considered or at least expected. However, the decision has not yet been made unless there's been a new recent update. Uh, but if this decision uh, goes through, then it will be, of course, a dramatic escalation as the US B-52s have not been on a 24-hour standby since 1991. So I guess you can interpret the development in two different ways. So first, it could simply be a sign of a declining hegemony. So the US has become increasingly uncomfortable with its diminished role in international affairs. So keep in mind that the US has only been the sole global superpower since the Soviet Union's demise in 1991. Ever since, the United States security strategy has mainly been to base its security on hegemony, that no other power could even aspire to rival it in terms of capabilities. So the US is not comfortable that the world has changed and that rising powers are no longer accepting this unipolar order. And there's some indications that this might be it, given that Trump prides himself of being big on the military, and he also surrounds himself with uh, uh, military generals uh, to the point that the military now has uh, immense influence over policies. So alternatively, it could simply be a negotiation tactic or a nuclear blackmail by threatening uh, and to escalate the nuclear standoff unless other countries fall in line with the U.S. position over issues such as North Korea and Iran, but probably the former in this, in this instance. So there's also good indications of this as, prior, uh, as Trump also prides himself of, of being uh, this great negotiator. So he may simply demonstrate that he's prepared to escalate uh, unless other countries fall in line. So I think we saw a similar tactic uh, play out over the Iran nuclear deal where Trump indicated that he's prepared to walk away completely from the deal unless his allies uh, support these modifications he suggests. Right. Um, as far as nuclear blackmailing goes, as you've just mentioned, this is uh, even if if these if the U.S. government doesn't choose to act upon this recommendation uh, or this suggestion, so to speak, it is still a political message being sent to North Korea. How do you think it's going to perceive be perceived at that end? Well, I think, uh, well, again, for North Korea, who is the much smaller party in the, this uh, rivalry, I believe that they would have to be even more uh, careful again. And North Korea, for all its faults, and there are plenty, it does have very legitimate security concerns as the United States and South Korea have this uh, security, um, well, military uh, military exercises on its, on its borders. So uh, North Korea would have to also escalate its rhetoric. So uh, most likely this will yeah, only elevate the tensions. Now, uh, I would be more concerned about China because they, um, the fear for the Chinese as the United States could uh, attack uh, North Korea and uh, this would put a nuclear war possibly on the border of both China and Russia. And it's interesting that the Chinese they have stated that they will not uh, that they will uh, not stand by if North Korea is attacked. So it's uh, unclear what the Americans want to get out of this because uh, this nuclear posturing uh, it could simply be signaling to make sure that the Chinese put further press pressure on the North Koreans. However, it's limited how much the North Koreans uh, 
can actually be pushed by the Chinese because the Chinese do not want the, Chi uh, the North Korean government to collapse uh, simply because the lesson for the Chinese in Europe after the Cold War was that when the Soviet Union withdrew, withdrew from Eastern Europe, they didn't, uh, the Americans didn't see their role as being unnecessary and they leaving the continent. Instead, they began to expand further towards the Russian border. So this uh, is a big issue in China. And if something would happen to North Korea, the Americans would not uh, lose the reason for be there and leave. Rather, they would likely expand further north and uh, yeah, establish a further presence on both the Chinese and the Russian border. So I, I don't think that the Chinese would, they, that there's much more they can do. They, so I'm, uh, I don't see anything constructive <laughs> coming out of this uh, nuclear posturing, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's leave it there for now. That's uh, Glenn Dyson, university lecturer and political commentator, joining us via Skype from Sydney. Mr. Dyson, thank you very much indeed for your comments here.